Morning. Um, one meal's please. And okay. 20 would be good if you've got. No problem, you've been before, haven't you? Are you right for cookers? I could do with a few actually, yeah, come on, I'm all right, my home, but have you got any other kind of throwaway ones? Sure, yeah. Please. And do you want citric, let's see? Um, citric, please. Um, just a quick question, have you ever heard of naloxone? Yes, yeah, yeah, I That's have. the overdose drug. Yeah, we've been talking and some friends have um, had, yeah, had to use okay. it, yeah. yeah. Um, we do a service now where we can train you to use a kit and provide you with one. Is that something you'd be interested in? Yeah, people have been talking about it, but I wasn't sure how long it took. Oh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Okay. Pop through to the next room and we'll get it done. Thank you. There you are. Have a seat. So Danny, we're, we're going to talk about overdose. Um, yeah. Overdose is the major cause of death amongst injecting um, drug users, mainly opioids. Um, most fatal overdoses are preventable because they happen when somebody else is there. Yes, no. Yeah, okay. So um, with, with naloxone, you're in an ideal position if you're with somebody that goes over to, to prevent somebody dying. They will teach me how to use this. Absolutely, it's, uh... yeah. So overdose is a major cause of death amongst drug users. Um, opioids, that includes methadone, subutex, okay. DHC, morphine, as well as heroin. Okay, so um, that's called, an opioid overdose is, can be from any of those drugs. Okay. Um, heroin injectors are 14 times more likely to die than other, other drug users. Um, you can still go over if you're smoking heroin, but injecting is obviously bigger. a much bigger risk. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, risk factors, so people who are more at risk of, of going over, um, are heroin injectors, um, users who are older, male, um, and people, you know, males that have had a long history of drug use, you know, it takes its toll on your liver and your kidneys. Um, when heroin is used with other drugs like Valium, alcohol, that pushes your risk of going over way up there. Um, People who've got uh, low tolerance, so um, they've recently been abstinent from drug use, so if you haven't used for more than three days, yeah. you know, the, the amount of heroin you need to get the same effect is much lower. Um, so if you've had a break from using, you shouldn't go in at the same dose. Um, so uh, if, you're, if you've just been released from prison or you've just come out of hospital, yeah, remember your tolerance is going to drop, you're going to be at a much greater risk of going over. And that's just after a few days, yeah. you say? Yeah, three days. Um, other risk factors, um, people with mental health issues or people who are very depressed can be at more, at more at risk from overdose. There's more of a sort of um, taking less care about what they're doing, not really thinking too much about the future. You know, I might go for that extra bag or, okay. in, you know, just going to push it a bit further. So those people are in, in um, high risk groups of going over. Um, and occasional users who aren't really sure about what doses they use or, you know, what's a safe dose for them, they're at risk of going over as well. So yeah. if you're in a, in a group of users and there's somebody that, that's not quite sure what they're doing, they're at a really high risk that they could do something badly wrong and, and go over. So the more you know, the more knowledge you have about how to deal with something like that if it were to happen, then the better. So how would you recognise an overdose? And oh, you've probably yeah. seen it yourself, haven't you? Yes. You can't wake the person up. They've got a horrible, rattly breathing, horrible, snoring, raspy. It's a really scary sound. Exactly, it is a scary sound. They might be blue, their lips might be blue, yeah. their fingernails will be blue, they'll be cold, limp, floppy. You just can't wake yeah. them up. And it's different, isn't it? It's different from somebody that's gouching, that's uh, that's used but is still breathing. They look more still... dead when they go in that. Exactly. Sort of, yeah, yeah. No. You can get a response from somebody that's just. Um, just used and is just gouging out, but overdose is different. Um, what you mustn't do, what you shouldn't do, what, what won't help them, um, shaking them, don't shake them, don't slap them around to get a response, it won't work. Um, don't put cold water on them, don't stick them in a cold bath, don't um, inject them with a stimulant like um, amphetamine, that will not help. Um, the, don't inject them with saline or salt. There's lots of myths that people think, oh, we'll do this, this will fix the situation. None of those things will work. I've done so many, I've done lots of those things. Yeah. And we've saying that we've heard now that's not, doesn't yeah, help. It doesn't help. So, if you're in, you might come across somebody in the street or you might be in the room with the person that goes over. Um, what you must do is approach that person with care, okay? Um, are there any use needles around, or is there any broken glass, make sure that you're not at risk. You're going to help this person, but you don't want to put yourself in any unnecessary um, danger. So check for hazards. Um, try and wake them up. So call their name, give them a little shake. Um, have, you ever, have you ever heard of a sternum rub? Yeah, we did. We did. 
Have you done the first, first aid, aid course here? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. so your knuckles yeah. on the breastbone. If they're gouchy and if they're just in a, you know, if they're in a, a really nice place, um, uh, that will wake them up. You'll get a response okay. if you do that. Okay. If they've overdosed, you're not going to get any response. Okay. And in that situation, that's when you want to be thinking, this isn't right. I need some help. All right. You need to phone an ambulance. So if you can't wake them up, ambulance is the first thing you do. Because once you've made that 999 call, you know that there are people going on their way that will know what to do. As soon as they get there, they will take over. All that scariness about that person is out of the window. So always call an ambulance first. Then, breathing. Um, the way that a heroin overdose will kill you is by stopping your breathing. So you need to check, make sure that the person's breathing. Um, if they are breathing, you put them in the recovery position and you just stay there. So just, just a quick reminder. Remember? Yeah, that's... That's the recovery Well, it's good they taught us and they said to us, you know, don't worry exactly, but the idea is as long as you get them on their side and they stay there, that's so right. that if they are going to be sick or something, it, it stops them. It comes away and they don't check exactly, okay. so uh, we go out, you know, yeah, practice, practice it at home. That, yeah, 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 you yeah. practice that in the sessions. Yeah, now, if the breathing slows down, or if the breathing stops, this is when you would use the naloxone. It reverses the effects of the heroin, um, but it only only lasts for 20 minutes. So it, what it does, it buys you some time, okay? So it, it just reverses the, the, the overdose for just for 20 minutes. Um, <clears throat> don't forget that you could bring the person round with the naloxone. They could wake up and say, well, cheers, Danny, I'm off. Um, and they could walk around the corner and go over again because the heroin is still in their system. So. Just remember, it's temporary, it's a 20 minute thing. Please, I encourage the person to stay with you until the, the ambulance arrives. It won't work if they've gone over on Valium or antidepressants or any other drug. It literally is just for opioids, okay? Um, so remember, naloxone only works on opio opioids. Um, no side effects. Um, it, will, it causes withdrawal, but a very um, mild withdrawal, not the massive cluck that you you so you've seen in pulp fiction of you. Comfortable, but not yes. for very long. They no. said it's okay. Okay, it, it, because you, you're doing it into the muscle and not into the vein, it just it's much more gentle. We're working about two to five minutes, um, not instantly. Like that's like when I've done heroin in the muscle. It's not as quick as going into a vein, is it? It's no, it takes okay. a lot longer. So naloxone, um, it's only available on prescription. You can't just buy it. So, so you can give that to But them. I can give it to you here. We've got a special um, arrangement here where we can supply it to you. Now just remember, um, the law allows any, any member of the public to give naloxone to a person that they think may have gone over on heroin. Okay, so it's, it's legal to give this to any member of the public suspected of having overdosed on heroin, methadone, subtex, any opioid drug. You can't be prosecuted for trying to save that person's life. Okay, so I'll just show you what's in the kit that you'll have. Uh, you've got some swabs. Um, in an emergency situation, you might not have time to use those, but they're there if you need them. Okay. You have a two mil syringe, a blue needle, and that's your ampule of naloxone. And that's where would you give it? it? That's, that's okay. all there is to it. So you put the you put the kit, you put the needle and syringe together. Yeah. With draw up the naloxone, and this is yeah. and just go through where where and how you would give it. Um, so you identify the injecting site. Remember, you've got the person in the recovery position. So you've got a big thigh muscle, just waiting for an inject. So what you would do is put it into the big muscle of the thigh, attach the needle to the syringe, tap the ampule to remove an, um, the liquid from the neck of the the ampule. Snap it, um, insert the needle, and draw up the naloxone. Okay, so you're going to give the injection into the big muscle of the thigh, this one here, or you could also use um, the muscle in the arm. It's easier to give it into the thigh because it's a much bigger muscle. Okay. That's why I use a blue needle. So yes, because it's, it's going into the muscle. Okay. Um, and I can just go through clothes. Uh, you yeah, can go through thin same. layers of clothes, like like this would be fine. Even thin denim like yours would be fine. Obviously check for car keys and wallets because it's not going to go through those. So you inject into the large muscle of the outer thigh. Hold the syringe like a dart. Um, so it's it's an intramuscular injection, not an intravenous injection. Do you remember? So you're holding it at 90 degrees to the skin. Pull the skin. If you've got if you're a, if the person's got a bit of meat on them, stretch the skin 
and then the needle goes in at 90 degrees like that. Okay? You can let go of the, the syringe, it's going to stay where it is. Move your hand so you're just depressing the plunger then very, very slowly. Okay? So the liquid goes in slowly and steadily. When you put the needle in, you want to leave about two millimetres of needle visible. So it doesn't, you don't stick it all the way in. You've got it just okay. two mils visible. Yeah. Why do you do that? Oops. So if the, if the needle was to snap or something was to happen, you'd be able to, to get the needle put out. Put it out, out then, can't yeah. you? Okay. Um, you remove the needle and the syringe then, put it in the pot that you've got it out of, so it's safe. Uh, if I've got a bin, I can put it in a bin as well. You can do, okay. um, but hang on to the pot, because when the ambulance uh, arrives, you're going to need to tell them what you've done. So if you've got the pot, you can show them, look, I've just given him this. Keep it in a safe place, let people know, the people that you use with, let them know where it is and what okay. it is. Um, encourage everybody that, that you know to, that uses opioids to come and have the training, get their own kit. Okay. The more kits that are out there, you know, the more lives that can be saved. Um, if you're going to carry, if you're going to carry it with you, um, make sure that the seal is, um, isn't broken. So it's not being used. Yeah. Okay. If you use your kit, come back and get another one from us. Okay, and we'll contact you when it's expired to remind you to replace it with a new one. Okay. Yeah. okay. That's it. That's it. Oh, so that's well. Fantastic. Thank you, Danny. Brilliant. Thank you. Yes. Well, that feels good. Thank you. I hope you don't ever need to use it, but if you do, make sure you come back and get another one. Okay. All right.